Team, how are we going? Let's see how we go with the, uh, what do we call it? The tribal music for a moment. And then I'll allow you to uh, see my face. The dentist that never quits. Just like Maddie Rosario, who just took out the gold. God bless her socks and her parents too for the support. Champion. Winner. How are we all going, team? I hope we're going well. Welcome back, Kaz. Just went and saw my dad. 82nd birthday. Very, very happy to see him. My daughter got him a jacket. He looks great in it. Love the man. Mum too. G'day, fish. How you going, buddy? Got one more minute before we jump on. But Lauren is shining. We just had a great conversation. Aaron Powell. There's an M in champ there, Aaron. We've got Joshy Fawns here as usual. Good to have you here. Aaron Powell. I you know, hope I'm pronouncing that right, sir. Good to have you here. Make sure, guys, if you want freedom of speech, that you subscribe to the channel that subscribes to you in your life. PP, Papa Palps. Makes you want a pizza. I haven't eaten tonight. Brown Key, not the Brown Key. Good to see you, mate. Dothraki, good to have you. That's from uh, Return of the Jedi, isn't it? Leo, the, the wanker stuntman. How you going, you fairy master? Kristen, how you going? Kirsten, sorry. Uh, Brad VR 46, Valentino Rossi's number 46. Imagine being um, Ricardo, the uh, F1 driver for Australia, getting paid tens of millions of dollars a year knowing you'll never win a race in your career. I can do that. Let's turn it down so we can turn it up. Hey team, how are we going? It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz and tonight we're here to talk about leadership. What is leadership? Who has it? What should the price of leadership be? Why are we doing this tonight? Could it be because we have someone doing a OBS? No, not OBS. A... Holy shit. Let me, let me think on that one. OSB, Officer Selection Board tomorrow. Thank you, mate. Hey, Lauren, uh, how, uh, how are you? Ate you, says Kirsten. Someone's eaten Lauren. That Alex Baldwin video you did was good. I watched it uh, again last night. Uh, Elena Hutchins was a Ukrainian person. Funny that. I didn't know that, mate. Well done, Josh. Guess what? Whose birthday is it yesterday? It'd be George Jetson. Okay, they thought we were going to have flying cars. They thought we'd be getting zapped to school. You know, his boy Elroy, the dog, I believe, was Astro. Jane, his wife, daughter, too young. Um, yeah, so there we go. So we're going to talk about leadership tonight. Some call outs we're going to do first, and that is to those gallant young men with 100 points that have just got out of Kapuka that have arrived at the School of Infantry today. One of the names is Jack, spelt or pronounced Jick in a New Zealand accent, who now has a BFA waiting for him tomorrow morning to see if he's done the work. His father watches the channel. His father has put him in for, bam, one of the fitness cards. If you want a fitness card, if you need to be the best version of you, meet us on Patreon in the link below. Be part of the crew. We've got over 60 people now in that group. They've all got their cards except Justin, whose card is getting sent tomorrow. And Kane, I'm waiting for you to send your address. If you want one of these to compete against yourself, to compete against Kaz, then jump on Patreon and say, I want a card, damn ya. And that is the best way to do it. You versus you, you can't. You can't lose when you're breaking PBs. Well done to Miss uh, Titmus as well that uh, uh, got a new world record. Weird thing is Titmus in Spanish means more tits. And I agree with that. Concur, green tick. Uh, we've had some other unusual situations. Uh, we've got uh, Carl, who's on his IET course at the moment. Well done representing on his cavalry course. Um, of course, uh, we've got George Jetson's birthday as we discussed. Uh, leadership. Okay, we'll be talking about it tonight. Uh, leadership is tested or is initially tested by implied 
consequences for failure. But that doesn't seem to happen. We've got a whole bunch of questions we're going to ask you tonight. You know, and you can be sitting in the vantage point of uh, a supporter as opposed to a leader because it's easier to support the plan. We've got 33 on at the moment, like if you can. Well done, lads, says our own pal. Tomorrow is going to be quite sad for some that turned up undercooked that didn't find this channel and therefore are not physically prepared for the BFA tomorrow, which will be the passport into the, their session at the School of Infantry. Now, it's a big bloody deal. A big bloody deal. Shafaz, hey Kaz, Ted Bundy here. Good to have you here, Ted Bundy. No one likes a list like Ted Bundy. Jacqueline Dixon, the beaver. G'day, guys. G'day, mate. Carl is learning which Jaffel fillings are best. Mm, he is. We've got uh, one of the distressing things. Let me say this quite quickly if you're going to join the army. There seems to be some sort of, um, I don't know whether it's an inside uh, thing, where everyone that goes to Kapuka seems to be going and buying bivy bags. at. And I'm not trying to do this guy out of his business, um, but when they get their local leave in Kapuka, they go on uh, to the disposal store and they buy a bivy bag. Let me tell you, you only use a bivy bag once or twice in your career. It's not worth three or four hundred bucks. It doesn't warm you up. You can get trapped in it and feel like you're a, a mummy entombed. I would say don't worry about it. It's supposed to keep your sleeping bag dry. All I'd simply say to you is have a couple of t-shirts, put them both on at night time in the absence of a thermal. Um, and from there, buy a jet boil. They're pretty good, but you can't take them onto some uh, vessels with pressurized cabins uh, because of the the gas bottle, but save yourself 400 bucks, you know, because it seems like everyone gets told to go to this guy. I don't know whether that is a bit of a G up setup, you know, because in your career, the bivy bag, I don't want you to take one personally, you know, because you can dig a moat around your bloody, uh, around your hoochie, and the more you bring out, the more shit there is to pack away. I'm not a fan, not a fan, didn't use them. Doesn't mean you can't, just let you know. Maxie Bigham, g'day, mate. G'day, Andrew Lavender. Smelling beautiful there. We've got uh, in the background here, that's Masada, been there. That's in Israel. You know, fantastic piece of history right there. We've got Julius Caesar looking at me going, what do you got to say, Kaz? And he's got down to his right hand uh, side, down the bottom, his favourite unit, which was the 10th Legion, the Aquarius, Equestrian, the Equestrian um, Legion because they were supposed to meet in the centre of a battlefield with some Gaelic warriors, and you were only allowed to bring your itinerary uh, of uh, cavalry with you, understanding they didn't have any cavalry that wasn't um, basically mercenaries. So what he did, he kicked the mercenaries off their horses. You know, they never had um, uh, stirrups back in those days, and put the 10th Legion on there. You've got a couple of hours to learn how to ride a horse. Um, and after that, you're going to have an ass like uh, Ian Roberts for a few days until you heal. But other than that, it circumvented the enemy's plans, you know, and made him ex extremely loyal to the 10th. Uh, we've got 343 there representing those. Uh, like Mr. Jack, you know, as he's about to start his uh, career in infantry. God bless his soul. Um, and it, some hard days ahead for him and his family. Uh, what else did we get? We've got a couple of uh, pictures we're going to whack up here. Uh, we spoke about Madison uh, Rosario, who done a magnificent job. You can see why I've probably got a bit of a crush on her. Not only is she gorgeous and beautiful, she, um, uh, correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong, but she actually lost her ability to use her legs at 10 years old after being in a car accident. And instead of uh, quitting and tapping out, you know, and then moving to the buckets of KFC, what she did, she got into sports. And look at this vision of beauty who just won gold in the marathon, does not quit. This is a lovely, beautiful lass. And I'm sure her parents are prouder than the tears they can produce. So for her, well done. Great job for Australia and for the women's uh, relay team. Excellent. Uh, we saw something a, what would we call a rebellion against gravity today with the, um, also, we're going to get to our subject with what happened in the velodrome. I don't even know how this is possible. I'm about to show you a couple of photos. 
Maybe it is the world's biggest bunny hop. Uh, this is one of them. Bam. How the hell did that guy up... Uh, where are we? Uh, my, my arm's not going to stick in there. How'd that Canadian guy get up there and how'd the other bloke, you know, with the St. George colours up there, uh, where's Wally, if you will, how'd they get in the crowd? Let's have a look at a better photo, Kaz. Bam. Look at that. The Canadian actually looks like he's riding against the wall. That guy in the red shirt over on the far right, that is not someone you want to lead, lead you into battle. <laughs> Holy shit. That would be sports photo of the year. Amazing. And I hope all of those guys and gals, uh, gals and the crowd, that kid with the glasses, mate, he is staunch. Look at the little kid near the, uh, near the rear tyre. That kid does not give a shit, little legend. Okay, that's the photos there. We've got a whole bunch of questions we're coming up for you guys in a minute. Let's get to your questions first. Lukey Fluke. G'day, Kaz and team. G'day, mate. Medicine Man's here. He's always here. Dave D, you should be able to pack everything away in under five minutes. Try three, and it should be done quietly. The most annoying thing at all is the sound of a zip to a platoon sergeant. Um, and he'll have packed his gear away before you get a chance to, before rebelli, which is a word you're going to grow to hate no matter whether you're an officer or a soldier. Hey, Kaz, what are we doing? We're going to be covering leadership tonight, mate. Joshy Fawns, Del Rathri, uh, that is gnarly, dude. It is. They spewed out right. Uh, Centri pedal forces push them. Centrifugal forces, I believe he's saying, push them upwards in the side of the wall. Doesn't have wax. But the thing is, dude, the thing is, it's never happened before. So this is pretty weird. Lauren is shining. Please, uh, the crowd's faces are priceless. They are. It's why I love photography, because you get to capture a moment and then go back and analyse it as long as it takes. There was some hospital visits after that. There was, Dave. Uh, it took more than 40 minutes of medical care before they could move um, the, the lad uh, that was in the red and white. He was in a really, really bad way, and um, I hope his family are okay too. Uh, haven't seen it happen. Hmm. Well, right, let's get to our questions, shall we? The first one I started to discuss was leadership. Okay, it should be, and leadership is different to management. We'll speak about that in a moment. You know, for the OSB tomorrow, the Officer Selection Board, when you go and do it, remember, they don't all might, I don't know of anyone actually failing it, but they probably do a lot of the testing before and also understand that, we need the people there and we'll do the culling actually at RMC, the 18 month course instead. All right? So that, because you don't even know what core you're going to when you go to RMC. They will determine that by meritocracy at the end, right? And I think it's a good way of doing it. Yuri, hey, Kaz, passed my assessment day a few weeks ago and we just want to know if you knew much about the aviation screening program. I know nothing. Also, a dedicated OSB vid would be great. We're going to sort of be doing that tonight there, Yuri. Um, the face of the crowd, okay, we saw that one, BMX Bandit, so good, ET. No, no baskets on those bikes. Zane Robinson, anyone uh, seen Biden has announced he will be completing the Mexico-US border uh, while Trump started? How bloody ironic. I wouldn't be surprised. And remember, the only person that wasn't a politician when Trump ran was Trump. Remember also that... No one really hated Trump until the day he said he was going to run. And the people that do hate Trump, hate Trump because they were told to hate him. Hmm. That's what I reckon. When a billionaire stands up and he says, I don't like what I see, and he doesn't drink, and I can do something about it, and then he does, I'd call that leadership. The consequences for leadership in a militarily sense is potentially the loss of your entire call sign. Okay, in political, it should be the promises you make, the policies you make, you know, that you fall on your sword, so to speak, if you can't deliver, which means you lose your job. You don't go to get over to uh, civilian um, uh, corporate level careers after that and then still push on like nothing happened, leaving the wasteland in your wake, like the Sri Lankan Prime Minister that leaned too far left, went woke, 
you know, and then what he's done, fled the country after announcing that they're bankrupt because he said, we're going to go purely organic. Now their food production went down to 50%. You know, now the people are starving, lost their money, no way back. And he's going to flee the country and go with all the other losers that are politicians, not leaders. Uh, Nicole X. Hey, Daz and Zane, all good here. All good to have you here. Listless. They hate him because they have no leverage on him. And he knows the secrets because he's been listening for 40 years and was probably a bit of a, uh, a donor himself to important things. Okay, let's have a look. What do we got, Kaz? Boom. Questions for you. Let's go. Bam. In your words, in your words, what is a leader? Because that's like asking, <coughs> what is a woman? That's a difficult question for people to answer, especially if they lack common sense. Okay. It'd be a difficult question to ask, what is a man, what is a woman, if you're talking about Lego figures, because they're all the same downstairs. Steve Webb, how funny, uh, how Brandon builds a wall and nothing is said. What about Mr. Obama? Believes in climate change yet bought a house on the water? He's in a suburb where there's no other black people? He's in a suburb where only 17% of people weren't born in America? And he's against walls, but has got a massive wall there. He's against guns and is surrounded by people with guns. Biggest hypocrite on earth. Anyway, in your words, what is a leader? Very, very interesting. Considering from the point that everyone in chat, including myself, will say are supporters. What do you need from a leader? We're going to extrapolate this and you'll get to see and if you're on an OSB this might be the very first question they ask what is a leader why do you want to be one first question a leader hmm let's see what you guys have got to say with a little bit of typing someone who takes responsibility in paving the way for their people okay medicine man a leader to me is someone who can make the difficult decisions under pressure that is uh, for the good of the team all right Leadership is about responsibility. You are all right. G'day, Gav. How you going, mate? Someone who owns failure, Dave D. This is where we come back to, but if owning failure means your death, will you still own it? Or you go, oh, maybe not this time. Identification of leadership needs to happen early. You know, when I was speaking to um, uh, the young fella, I'll say his name, not his whole name, when I was speaking to Benny, who has his OSB tomorrow, Officer Selection Board, what is a leader is the one question we sort of pondered. Now, to me, for it to be identified, for it to be articulated, I would say, in my own words, and you can add whatever spin you want to it without looking at Wikipedia, that leadership is a title that is bestowed on some, some people, even reluctantly taken up, and basically voted on by your peers in the absence of external forces delegating you as said role, identifying your talent, identifying your confidence, your charisma, your ability to not be contested by those that appears that follow you because there is something about you that they know will get them home safely. Now, people are going to say that guy's a leader, this guy's a leader, whatever. But what I'd want to know if the result of him being wrong is that he loses his life, you're not going to see as many people step up, are you? And if they do, it's because they know the answer or the squeeze is worth the juice. Now, there's many examples of that. There's Scipio Africanus, you know, who went and uh, defeated Hannibal Barker. You know, all of the generals before that pretty much had died on their shield or right, by failing, and he knew that was the price. He stepped up and he took that. Julius Caesar, when he chose to cross the Rubicon and then ultimately went and fought to the death, Pompey, an undefeated consul of Rome, is a real deal. When he went and fought Vercingetorix, amazing. Amazing. There should always be a cost. If you're a politician, you step up, you fail, you fail to deliver, boom, sacked, gone. Never work again. 
Zane Robinson, a leader is a person capable of influencing and changing actions and behaviours inside a team for the betterment of the team with respect to the team, not necessarily with respect for the team, for a successful outcome. You need to be able to make those hard decisions. It's not about the team's feelings at all or ever, you know? Amen to that, Kaz. Thank you, medicine man. Listless. Kim Jong-un, the be <laughs> best leader out. Imagine if he said at the moment, because it'd be a human humanitarian nightmare if all of a sudden North Koreans got their VPNs and allowed them to get online and see the way the rest of the world sees. You know, but at the same time, when you're living in certain sectors of North Korea, there's probably some people in their mind, their perception, they're having a good life. I don't know. But if you took away that shield, that illusion, it'd be a big problem. Imagine if he said, oh, I am willing to, as long as it doesn't hurt, be executed for my sins, if there is any that they're talking about, and um, allow them to dissolve into South Korea and become just Korea. It'd be a beautiful thing. You know, uh, Dave Pensett, it's earned, not given. Yep. It is, it is earned, but, it's, but it is given. Leadership is given by people to their peer, the trust initially, and then from there it's fostered, it's built on, and it becomes that. You know, whether it turns out to be successful or not, because a leader can still be an amazing leader, but then he's met with an even better leader with a, a quicker and better decisive action cycle that defeats him. So even great leaders lose, i.e. Napoleon. When he met the famous British commander, uh, Wellington, Duke of Wellington. True, does lots of folks claim leadership ability. They do all the time. It's weird. Uh, and that's why they need to make sure at the OSB, when they ask you these questions, that you haven't got a personality disorder rather than actual said leadership. So the next question they'd ask after this is, if you want to be a leader, what makes you think that you have leadership qualities? Give me an example. Were you the school captain? That's a pretty good one. Okay, because it's voted by peers. Were you a sports captain? Yes, I was. What What was the team? Who chose you to be a captain? How long were you the captain for? Important questions. Important. Puts on the spectacles of wisdom. Guardian, a good leader is a good listener. Sometimes, sometimes you have to have time to listen. And that unlocks some of the points we're going to talk about in a second, actually. Yes. Uh, righto. Next question. Let's move on to it. Goodbye, this question. Bam. Next question. Good transition. Okay. Some of the qualities that you might need to have. Charisma. People still have to like you to an extent to follow you initially. Problem solver. You have to have intelligence to be able to problem solve. You've got to be decisive actor. You need to be able to move quicker than your opposition and I for subordinate talent. What do I mean by that? You don't do it alone. Your war game as much as possible because group average always works out well. But it has to be articulate people that aren't wasting your time. Otherwise, they call it too many chiefs. Australian Army has too many chiefs. Anyway, we could get rid of enough people from the upper echelons that we could have another battalion paid for for less than the price it costs to put the rubber on the road for supposedly 5,000 officers. Just take 1,000 away. The higher ones, not the lower ones. The lower ones are always important. Sinaj, how's your hair going, mate? Plum K, staying calm in high-pressure situations. Absolutely. That is a fantastic one there, uh, Plumber Coast. And the reason uh, we do that is we test people to failure, okay, in peacetime so that we can actually learn and rebuild from those mistakes uh, and allow people to understand uh, through failure how to then uh, build themselves back up. So charisma, problem solver, decisive actor, and I for subordinate talent. You know, I was having a good talk with Benny today. And I said, when you think of the most famous commanders in the world, we think of Chevelle. We think of um, people like uh, Churchill. We think of... Um, Duke of Wellington, of Genghis Khan, of um, 
uh, Julius Caesar, of Trajan, you know, of Leonidas, of all of these people. But no one sees or hears about the tier of leaders that make it all happen, that are one below the head. You know, they call them the lieutenants, regardless of what their rank is. You, know, you never hear about them. But the victories come from tactical commanders that are driven by strategic commanders that give the commanders to the tactical commanders who win the day. Yep. Bob. Use this line in the OSB if you want a job. When asked what leadership is, the process of influencing others to gain their willing consent in theoretical pursuit of missions. That's, that's an excellent one, Bob. That's excellent. But it does sound like you've looked it up online. You know, that's the danger of it. They need to know that whatever you say isn't on a palm card just in front of you. You know, Stephen Webb, uh, good day, JP. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. And Daz, how's your water buffalo going, mate? Medicine man, you need to be quick on your, your feet to think. Problem solved. Be able to take advice from superiors without ego and be somewhat charismatic and, of course, experience in your field. I agree, that medicine man. But what happens? I don't know if I believe in the Zelensky. I think there's more to his situation. I think he's a leader, yes. But there's something about him. I don't know if we've seen the whole Zelensky yet. Um, but anyway, um, what happens when a commander is led by a worse commander? That can be dangerous. Especially if you're overpowered by bad decision, ego, or megalomaniacs. That can be very dangerous. They used to have an answer for that, and that was the Praetorian Guard captain. You know, used to give you a little bit of Gladius for dinner. The sworn defender A team at work as, as usual, uh, so won't be able to partake in the knowledge that is uh, given to later. Good leadership is built on humility, understanding, extreme ownership of anything that goes wrong. Well, sworn defender, <coughs> I agree with what you say there. And how often do we actually see our commanders, our politicians, our police, our military taking responsibility for the actions of their actual team and the morale of their unit? whether that be the nursing, whether that be police, whether that be military, air force, navy, etc. What we're never seeing anymore is the leadership which are now getting chose on their political ability rather than their actual decisive die on the hill or at all cost represent and love their team. Don't know. I'm not seeing much of it. Delrathi, a good leader can turn their enemies into their followers just through their charisma and influence. Yep, belief in the mission, hard, fixed policy. And who, who do we see? I always say it. Donald Trump is the one. He is the one that turned up, not as a politician, into a foreign agency. And then from there, he said, these are my policies. I put it out there. I put it out there proudly. I'm standing up as a reluctant leader. You know, because I believe I can do better than what's happening at the moment. And he delivered every single one of the policies and more, all without dragging anyone into any WARs. And for that, he gets my respect. Rural Hunter, look after and listening to their people and putting their ego behind them. Ego can be the death of many. The army would weed out the, the wheat from the chaff to get the right leader. You would hope so. Um... The difference is there is a cost. There is a financial cost. And I had a uh, an American Special Forces colonel, actually, who said to me one day, he goes, Kaz, can you believe in a course that no one fails when it's to do with leadership? And I went, that's a great question. I'd probably say, no, I can't. And he goes, I ask myself the same question. If there is not anyone that fails, then does that mean anyone can do it? It's worth pondering. There should always be one person who's cast on the rocks. As a reminder to everyone, there is a consequence for failure. Uh, Sinaj says, a good commander led by a worse one reminds me of my current job and so many Sinaj, which is going to take us into the next one, the difference between leadership and management because they are different. Uh, it kind of means every time I've uh, been led well, it's uh, because the leader was direct and honest. Yep. Absolutely. Mate, we have had commanders, Mr. Wilson, for example, and I'm not talking about a volleyball on a stranded island, where we had people in the battalion lining the battalion and crying when he left. 
We love this man. Big man too. The cult K. Trump needs to be re-elected. He ran the country as a business and achieved what uh, he set out to do. He wasn't in there wanting to win a popularity contest. Yep, he said it. And, you know, you can only tell by um, the rallies how the people turned up. Law abiding, loving what he had to do and say. The alternate was burning places down. You know, it was disgusting. The sworn defender. Well, as uh, stated at work, so have a good stream, Kaz and team. Looking forward to listening to this later. Not so cow for you. Uh, ex uh, paroxysm. Good leaders will insist on the inconvenience of higher standards and won't compromise them for anything. One of the people that comes to my mind for that is Gaius Marius, which they believe might have even been Julius Caesar's father. And he was the one that said, our military model is dog shit. He's going, what we're also going to do now is we're going to become Marius's mules. We're going to overhaul our entire military and we're going to make physical toughness the deciding factor on the battlefield. And it did. And it made them the might that they were. And it allowed him to be six or seven times consul. Not sworn defender. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Bam. Next one. Mr. Music. What's the difference between a manager and a leader? You know, I think a leader is the guy with the decisive capability, able to make decisions, or her, make decisions with limited information, faster than their opposition, and still come out tactically, able to solve that problem with confidence, with charisma, and win the day. The manager is more of the supporter, more of the logistics guy, gal, behind the scenes. Someone that has all the information, someone who balances the books, is there because of time, not because of charisma and skill, etc. That can be a component. There can be an overlap between leadership and management. But normally when people go to RMC, you see the people that are very decisive get pushed into uh, arms corps, while those that are, are very uh, articulate with um, deliberate actions, etc., tend to be more managerial, right? Uh, good leaders will insist on the inconvenience. Okay, yep, we saw that one. Uh, uh, hi, guys, late for this one. Managers found at the Q store. Yep, good one. Managers take orders from the leaders, pretty much. They're normally subordinate to leaders. Managers are normally subordinate to leaders. Uh, leaders are generally the best type of people because they have their shit figured out. You know what? A leader probably wants to talk to you to find out whether you should work for him. A manager wants to see your resume. You know, because a leader needs you to have talent. You know, it needs to be a meritocracy. If it's not a meritocracy, then to me, it's a charity. I'll say that one again. If you were going to give someone a job based on uh, either whatever their group uh, is, identity, then that's because you're giving a charity. You're not giving... A meritocracy you're actually against your own business if you're in a position where you're kicking goals and you've got a certain positions where you can have uh, scholarship roles as long as it can't be um, damaging to the company bottom line etc you know or openly disrespectful to others that work hard every single day you know then okay Lauren I wouldn't follow someone who couldn't get their own life together good point PK Joe Biden must be an amazing leader. More votes than any other US president. He um, he got 300% of the votes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, David, I hope you're doing well, mate. Nicole. Yuri, how you rec uh, how you recommend you make yourself stand out as a leader in a room full of good leaders? RMC. That's a tough one. That is a tough one because only uh, opportunity will determine whether you are better than them or not and how could you possibly be better than them until it's been physically proven and they mate you, uh, rate mates rate mates is one of the activities you do and you should take it very very seriously you know when you get to rate your mates because someone based on what you think is cute at the time can actually lose their job over it yeah. so when mates rate their mates that means that when you're rated by your peers 
that people get to actually see what happens behind the backs of the of the uh, the DS, the directing staff, the instructors, etc., so that someone can't escape. They also do it in ORs courses. They do it on uh, special forces. They do it across the world. Rate your mates. No one escapes. Hey, Kaz, off topic, but I'm expecting a call tomorrow about my U session uh, with leading seaman from DFR. What should I call him? I don't know what you call a leading seaman. Can someone help out Plum Coast there? I don't know. I wouldn't mind knowing myself. Promotion by merit, not uh, minority group. Okay, and let me explain that quickly. One of the biggest problems with the Australian Army is it's based on time, not on ability. What do I mean by that? You go to RMC, okay, 18 month course. You come out of there, you can speak directly to uh, DOCOM, which is your uh, career counseling. You can't do that as an OR. Now you're probably gonna be a Lieutenant for four years, roughly, okay? Two years in a battalion environment, and then two years either in a training establishment or something else, exterior. From there, you're going to get on a captain's course, and then from there, you're going to be a captain for three or four years. And then after that is done, you're going to go become a major and see if you get field commission uh, uh, situation as well that allows you to go to a battalion, etc., um, and be in a field force unit. Now, all of these are four-year blocks until you get to a position where you hit a, a hurdle that says you can't go beyond here. You haven't been deemed eligible to go to, um, uh, what we would call it, um, to go to the college, back to the college and become potentially a red tabber. You know, Lieutenant Colonels, Colonels, uh, upwards from there, um, which is above Lieutenant Colonel, sorry. Uh, but there's there's a lot of uh, mates, uh, what would you say? Big boys club, I guess you'd say. But there is so many uh, positions in there where why can't you be a lieutenant for longer? Wouldn't that make you a better commander later? The more time you've done down here at the actual coal face, where you're not ticking away the day after day after day, going, I'm closer and closer to get promoted regardless of how well I do in my reports. And the person who reports on me never actually really sees me do my job. You know, because the ORs don't actually do a... Uh, an appraisal report on the platoon commander despite the fact that he's been in for, you know, nearly 10 times longer. Doesn't make sense to me. Platoon sergeants should be able to write a report on a lieutenant. Maybe they can now. I hope they can. Yuri, how you recommend you make yourself stand as leader? Plumbers Coast, take us off topic. Okay, we've seen this one. Promotion on merit. Daniel Foreign manages, see people as resources and logistics, a leader inspires and motivates towards improvement. I'd say, I'd say you're right. Let's go to the next question. Bam, next one. Who do you see as an inspirational leader and why? I've already said Donald Trump for the very reason I said before. Um, I see uh, a lot of medical individuals, um, their leadership, what they do to, uh, uh, to actually change uh, procedures, etc., uh, to keep everything moving well. Elon Musk, to an extent, you know, is a leader. You know, what about um, they can be military, they can be political. There's good leaders too, Zelensky, if you will. Okay. What about bad manager, a bad leader? Okay. And that's a leader that gives in to the peer pressure of others. You know, if a military commander allows the politicians to push him around, he's a bad leader. Yep. Manage to see people as resources. Okay. Uh, the boss is here. For those that don't know, the boss, he changes his name quite often. Right? You'd also know him as Robin. You know, he'd call himself Deadpool, etc. He is now one week into his trip of doing at least two to three laps of Australia in his Raptor. Okay, so that he can live life. Fantastic. Dave Penson, I would agree. He was a great man. And what I mean by great was he was someone who was set apart. He lost his way along the way. Um, okay. So quickly, without looking it up, what is the circumference of Australia? Do you know, team? The circumference of Australia, if you've got a pace counter, and walk the entire coastline around, 
Now, what would it be? I know what it is. Guardian. Very tense music, Cash. Do you want me to turn it down a little bit, team? There you go. It's called Tribal. Guardian. Dalrathi, you're a good leader, mate, be, uh, because you're out there giving all the people who watch your stuff great uh, stuff we can live by. Dalrathi, Dalraki, I, I believe I'm a supporter. You know, It's just that no one else does it. No one else does it. Yet the, the consequence of it is our channel gets smaller and smaller. And that kind of sucks. I've just contacted the School of Infantry to see if I could go up there and uh, do some work for them. Uh, whether that be interviews, whether that be photography, whether it be videography, uh, etc. Um, I've been told by the, the guy that I spoke to that I know very well. Um, at this stage, he's not in a position that can yes that, uh, but wants me to come up there to, to say good day and have a look at the new training, etc. So I'll be doing that, um, and that'll be this year. Uh, but I will be asking the right people. That'd be crazy not to use a free... Um, utility that I would make sure that I screened everything I did to not give the army a bad name in any way while at the same time giving transparency, giving um, uh, respect to those that wear the uniform on our behalf. Yuri, as an enthusiastic of uh, classical studies myself, would you recommend saying historical figures such as Caesar, Mark Antony or Augustus inspire you in the OSB? Absolutely. Absolutely, Yuri. But then explain why. As long as you can explain why. Because to me, that's 101. You know, if you mention someone like Chevelle, and then they said, okay, Chevelle, why? You remember, they're all going to know about Chevelle. They want to learn something. They don't want to be bored by whoever people turn up with. What about Trajan? Trajan is amazing. You know, he's phenomenal. Apollodorus was his engineer. Um, commander, you know, who built a bridge across the Danube, I believe it was, and it was considered a um, a wonder of the world at the time. And then when they went over and kicked the ass of the Dacians, took their treasure, came back and said, "Burn that bridge." And he's like, "I I I, I made the best bridge in the world." He's got, "Yep, yeah, burn it," and he did. And that was a leadership decision. Daniel, I really enjoyed the open day too. The open days are always good. I don't even know who that is, Mr. P. Sid of any. Uh, Rambuka looks after his people. I don't know who it is, and I apologise. Okay, the boss is close, 26,300. I thought it was 25,700 kilometres if you don't lose the spare barrel and have to go back to get it. Uh, uh, paroxysm, is Jordan Peterson too political an answer to that question in an OSB setting? Um, I don't think Jordan Peterson is political. I think he is a modern, uh, well, how, what sort of, what would you put him in as? A modern scholar, you know, of human um, psyche, you know, patron of wisdom, of common sense, of self-reflection. I've met Jordan Peterson. I've sat down with Jordan Peterson for over an hour. I thought he was amazing. I thought he was fantastic. I uh, would not let uh, non-indigenous Fiji. I'm not. I'm not sure about that, Mr. P. You know, if you love your country and you love your family and you love your children more than what your ego, then you're probably doing all right. I reckon. What well, uh, next question? Lauren is shining. He's a thinker like Plato. There you go. Consequence of failure or defeat? We're not seeing any consequences for people that are ruining our countries by embracing the left and their ideology regardless of how it represents our children in learning institutions. We're not seeing uh, Australia looking after Australia, exporting gases that should be for Australians while the prices are going up for our elderly and our people that are vulnerable for paying bills, low socioeconomic. You know, we're seeing really, um, what would you call it, lack of leadership. It stands out when you see it. You know when you're being led well. You do. Both sides of the aisle. Why don't they say? Labor Party, Liberal Party. Okay, 
put your you put your policies down. No one looks, and there is a uh, individual uh, group of people that then go, okay, we've got them. You don't know each other's. Cross off what's on his uh, that is the same as these. Where is the overlap? And then it comes down to what are you voting for? A leader that thinks that transgender is the most important, or one that believes in bringing down the prices of uh, fuel. You know, maybe bringing in nuclear power and getting our farmers looked after. Uh, that's a no-brainer. If you look after your people and you look after the country, then it pays you back with success. Don't lean towards something that will give you an immediate tick just for validation. Otherwise, you'll fall on the rocks and you'll lose the support of those that support you. Uh, General... Uh Brodenell, White isn't an interesting World War I Australian leader, openly disdainful of the politics around who was going to get top jobs, very capable. The funny thing is those at the very top never make a decision. All they do is uh, lay down the, the lawn and the, and, the, and the hay for where they're going to sleep uh, while you're still getting wet. Normally, that's why you never see them. Their paperwork always comes before their handshakes. Whether you cannot see me, Joshy, I mean, JP led a movement of sorts. Uh, ever heard of Jocko uh, Willink? Yeah, I do, mate. Yep. Uh, big inspiration for me and a great leader. Yeah, he is. Absolutely he is. And you know what? He doesn't tell you what he's going to do. He is talking about what he's done. Yep. Uh, Dave Penson, uh, get up, stand up, and move on. That's right, Dave. Uh, are you counting Tassie? I'm not sure what that one's about. Uh, Webby, my quality to see my tapping of the keys. Hell of a lot of kilometres. Yep. 25,700. Next question. Consequence of failure or defeat. I'll give you an example there. We said before, Scipio Africanus, when he stepped up, when the consuls stepped up and said, okay, like virus, etc., I'm going to, to lead these troops, etc. If you failed, you died. That was what happened. So if, if they said who's going to come and lead these, these guys, this band, this, this army, you know, they're more likely to go, yeah, no worries. You know, if, if they know that you know what the cost is because no one wants to take your place, do they? And then when you win, the winner, the winner gets the spoils, doesn't he? Yeah, by, by a byproduct of winning. Uh, Jocko scares the shit out of me. Yeah, I wouldn't want to... Uh, I wouldn't want to get bear hugged by him, mate. Because he's got that charisma, hasn't he? All right. Boom. Burden of command and length of commitment. I think this is an important one. The burden of command means that you are on basically an isolated journey. You know, a path less trodden. You don't get to socialise with your subordinates. You know, what you have to do is make the hard decisions and understand that the fault lies with you. You know, that you can be held accountable for the actions of those beneath you. The length of commitment. I believe that an Australian officer should not be allowed to serve more than 20 years unless there are, and this is to help them, not to hurt them, unless there is something that makes them stand out in a way that their position is vital. And then that uh, comes out in their actual um, uh, representation uh, from Dockham to say this guy is going to be uh, shortlisted for this position or gal, for example. Now, an example of that would be if you know that your career only goes for 20 years, then at the 10-year mark, you know you're halfway through. So you're going to start to look about what's next. And then you're not going to have that competition for the greater roles later because they're already off-ramping towards their corporate job, towards their intelligence community job or whatever it may be. You know, but the length of command should be 20 years. See you later. Because what you have to do is you can't let the grass get to the stage where it eventually falls on itself through fatigue. It needs to be always thrusting forward maybe 16 years for officers. Okay? Who knows? What's the magic time what about a soldier what about Kaz I was in for 24 years but holy shit I was nearly dead on my feet physically bleeding from my ass you know with a back with uh which wasn't standing up and occasionally has spasms and, and my legs go out from under me and at the same time my head giving me nightmares 
you know, eventually you've, you've got to call it quits, don't you? Infantry is a young man's job, but old men hold on to it way too long. Hey, medicine man, welcome to the Great Unwashed. Boom. Good to have you here, as per always there, medicine man. You look good in a uniform, young mate. Good to have you here. Can we get some thumbs up for the medicine man? Medic! I'm going to start calling you, mate. Dave D, the burden of command is one of the hardest parts to, to get a grip on and one of the main hurdles that people can't get over. I agree, Dave. And um, one of the really hard things is when you see a commander, you know, cracking for medicine men. Uh, when you see a commander, for example, and they're getting a debrief, and it's one of those shut the fuck up moments, you know, it is hard when you can see in their eyes they're trying to say, but you can't see what I'm trying to translate, you know. And they're just on receive. They're just getting told, bam, bad, bam, this. This could have been improved. Whether it uh, be in AARs, or, uh, where it's all about uh, fixes, improves, and sustains, or sustains, improves, and uh, fixes, right? and their time to talk is over, and they're just copping that, and then at the end, okay, either not yet ready or uh, failed, a failed lead. You're going to have to have a retest now because you can actually be let down by a section commander that goes rogue, by a, a tactical uh, mobile call sign. It can be because your orders uh, didn't relay what's going on. It could also be, are you ready for this one? Um, it could be because your team is starting to get picked by political reasons, standards dropping, quota, that is putting people that should not be in that uniform, in that position, in your command, that means that your entire course on there has to move it. That said person's ability, which means you don't make your timelines, which ultimately means mission failure because your decisive ability made no difference because the tools that you have are Chinese made and aren't up to the task. That's a fact, Jack, and I've seen it a lot. Hey, Senior Briggs, how you going, mate? How you going? The young fella's got the BFA on tomorrow, hey? Let's see how he goes. I hope him and his brothers do really well. And then I'll give him his card, okay, when I get his address off him. Around. Uh, hi, sorry, Kaz. Uh, didn't know you were just messaged you on Patreon. Has some advice about making a forum for us to post our progress, a way to track improvement in our fitness. I think that'd be a great one, mate. I think that'd be a great one. Let's um get back off there for a second. We'll go back. Boom. There it is. Um. A way of progressing against each other because it's one thing for us to have our card for ourselves but we need to make sure that we actually see the cards of others lightfoot is the first person to produce a full card right eh? um fantastic uh, but when you have your scores done and you've got a permanent marker to put those down that permanent but it can still be rubbed off with a bit of metho um you're going to see improvements in yourself when you know that every single time you beat one of your scores Okay, that that is you, a better version of what you were the day before. Fantastico, as I'd say in Spain or Dora. You know, jump on Patreon team, get one of these cards, because there's no point in me ever giving advice on fitness right, if people aren't willing to help themselves, get a card, represent, and then flick that across when they talk to their mate, challenge their mate, you know, or talk on the uh, assessment um, uh, the assessment session and be able to say, this is where my fitness is right now. Bam. How do you like that one? Give me a number. I think it's excellent. I honestly believe that this is an excellent tool. An excellent tool. Something tangible. Something that puts pressure from your pocket. Uh, Mr. Patterson, have you done your tax yet? No, mate. Uh, people, if not, better get it done. If you think you get a return, you may not, as the government might be out of cash. We're going to be in trouble soon, mate. I'm getting a little bit nervous about the uh, the NDIS system. Um, not the fact that it helps people that are the most vulnerable, but the fact that it seems like the limited amount of vetting for people to go there and get paid uh, the money uh, with no real accountability of the, the level of quality those people are said giving. I need to do mine too. Uh, Lauren. One thing to be motivated, excited when you start, another thing to stay motivated. Keep going, folks. You've got to keep going. We don't get fit for the military. You get fit for you. 
to avoid injuries, to prepare yourself for the rigors ahead, to be able to have human movement. Uh, one of the, the guys that was a police officer that I spoke to on the weekend, who's not a police officer anymore, nice kid. He's telling me about the bench press that his mates do, that he wants to get to, the fact that he has a weighted vest for this and that and the other. And I'm, just, I'm talking to him and going, mate, listen to someone who has been in the fitness industry their whole life and tell you, people don't care what you can bench press. It makes no difference what you can squat. If you try to break your PBs all the time with those, all you're going to do is hurt yourself. Bone density is a good one that you get from doing resistance training. You know, and the uh, the mental benefits of hypertrophy, which is body shaping, body sculpting. But if you do chin-ups and you do dips and you do burpees and you do swimming and you do prone holds, then you're going to have uh, anterior, front of the body. Okay, you're going to have medial, the, the center of your body, and you're going to have posterior uh, benefits, which is your back. Um, if you do all those and you can functionally move, and your life is full of things like either rowing or kayaking or uh, surfing, you know, hiking, doing ultra trail cycling. I think I said that, you know, uh, free diving. All of these things is about living your life better, being part of groups, clubs, circuit training is as good as it gets. Muscular endurance, please. Mm, the hardest way of training. Everyone's gone. We're down to uh, almost no people. Wait two seconds. Hey, hello. Hi. Hey, darling, how are you going? Good. Can I please give you a call back in about 20 minutes when I'm not online? Darling? Right, sure, sure. I love Bye. you. Hey, guess what? Guess what? Oh, she doesn't know that I just bought her a whole bunch of Lego today. Um... Yep, she's going to be pretty excited so we can have daddy-daughter time in fitness, compete against yourself, not others. Yep, that's it. Uh, it's nearly been for on and for an hour. What have we got there? Uh, also, you can create a forum and we can... Yep, I believe that is the good way to do it around. I don't even know how to say your name there. Sorry, mate. I'm not trying to be, um, what do you call it, disrespectful when I don't get people's names correct. Nearly been for an hour, Mr. P, and it's great to have you here. How are you going, Mr. P? That is a man who would know what good leadership looks like and what bad leadership feels like when it's in charge of you. And it sucks, team. Medicine man. Still here, boss? <laughs> there we go. I wonder if the boss is still here. Dave D. She has the, the best Lego already. She does, Lauren. She's got the police station, but she's about to get to school now. You know, and she's also getting the the, um, the water slides. You know, Lego has really come a long way, team. Uh, Haroon. Oh, there you go. There you go. Some people just love lifting weights, though. Yeah, but they do. They do love it, but they don't know why they're doing it. And then when they one day when they've got an injury, you know, and then they spend the rest of their life, you know, feeling like... Uh, I'd know like a sack. One of the things about being um, almost elite level fitness is you can spend the rest of your life trying to chase that. You know, one injury and the rest of your life can feel like, you're, uh, like your back is jelly. Uh, Plumber Coast, Kaz, have you done a, a part two video for Army Reserves? I don't think I have, mate. And I put some questions down in, in later on, mate. And, and from there, I will make a video on that. No problem. Lego is amazing nowadays. It is. It is. How are we going? We've been on for 58 minutes and 40 seconds. In uh, in conclusion to the, the leadership component of this team, um, I think it's very important that you're able to, one, understand that leadership should be reluctant. You know, the price of being a leader is high. In failure, but as well in success. As Napoleon, or was it Wellington, that said, the only thing worse than a defeat in, 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 a, in a battle is a victory because now you have to clean up the mess. Okay, we're seeing that the decisions you have to make as a leader 
within HR is dismissing people. And now we have a legal system within the HR department that says no matter how bad this person is, you know, or how bad they are for the business, once they get in and entrenched like a tick, regardless of the fact that they're bad for the company, they're allowed to lie to your face but still get to stay. But hard decisions need to be made. And leaders speaking directly to their workforce and have regular um, uh, managerial conversations with their people is a good way to identify talent. And when you've got levels of talent that is meritocracy, it is earned, right? then you give them the pay rises, then they keep all the checks and balances and they become valves where you can locate where the problem is at. Is it at lieutenant level? Is it at captain level? Is it at major level? Is it at colonel level, battalion? Yeah, it's not hard to see where the problem stems and then the consequence of failure should be permanent. Well, this is important in all careers in every family. Yep, especially when it comes to leading a country. Love your country before all other countries. Provide for your country before all other countries. If you have to go and support something in military action, then you send them with all of the power to come back the winner, no matter how cruel that is. And you'd be ready to pay the price for the fallen. Joshy, respect not given, it's earned. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys and gals, let's get out of here. Um, let's support our guys and gals of the Commonwealth Games. And remember that leadership and management are different things but have overlaps. To understand that your leader, when you ask for a raise, you're putting them in a hard position because you might not do any extra. You might not be excellent for the team but still want that money. You know, think from their point of view and then take it out of their hands by saying, what can I do better? What makes me a better employee, a better team member? Maybe I hang on. Maybe I beat him to work a couple of times. Maybe I go home later than him a couple of times. You know, maybe I be compassionate in the workplace. Maybe I listen more than I talk. Pot kettle. You know, but you can fashion yourself and make yourself valuable to the team and in turn eventually get identified as a leadership role, reluctant, then step up if you think you can do a better job. You have to have opportunity to become a leader and a leader needs to be accepted by those that call him brother or sister, peer. And no, by you being a commander, by default, they are now a subordinate. And if they're willing to still follow you, you're doing something right. If you think you can do a better job, step up. But understand there's consequences. All right, guys and gals, um, NDIS is quite complex when you get into it. You have to push to get enough funding, then realise support you require uh, to spend said funding is hard uh, to access or non-existent. They splash the cash, pretty cars, they do. They absolutely do. And um, there's, a, there's a saying that when an entity spends money that someone else owns on another person then it's always going to be corrupted. I'll say that one again. When you spend someone else's money on someone else, you don't care. You don't go for those quotes. You don't go and check the balances to see what's going on. We've got so many holes where money just gets poured into in Australia and no one ever seems to check or balance it. The money just disappears. Disappears. Anyway, let's get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this. And for Benny tomorrow for OSB, just a quick one. They're going to ask you, why do you think you're a leader? We've already had this conversation. They're going to ask you, what is leadership? They're going to ask you, who inspires you? And tell me why. They're going to say to you, tell me some negative points about yourself. So they know that you haven't got a personality disorder and you can take criticism and self-reflection. They're going to ask you, uh, for example, um, what do you want to do within the military? Right? How long do you want to stay in for? We've asked what is leadership. They're going to ask you to communicate. 
for four or five minutes on a subject you know about, right? or one you don't. They're going to ask you to potentially critique others around you to make sure that you can have that personality, that conviction to actually point out the wrong, not the good in something, because we're not there to give ourselves uh, shandies. And, mate, I believe that you have an 80% chance of passing tomorrow. He's young, but I believe he's got an 80%. And I tell you now, if he gets in, then he's going to be the most successful person in his learning institution at the moment by default. Well done, because who dares wins? And that doesn't have to make you SASR. That is anyone who dares to attempt what others will not has taken a shot that gives you a 100% chance, better chance than not taking a shot at all. For that, guys, he gets my respect. Medicine man, great stream. Thank you, mate. Andrew is Andrew. Thank you for being there too, Corporal. <laughs> no salutes for corporals. Mr. P, my grandson loves uh, my Meccano. There you go. Do you mean Meccano set or coffee? Lauren, gosh, Brady, I hope everyone has recovered from the Rona. Everyone says we get it now. G'day, Kaz. Uh, how are you, buddy? Sim man 85 I'm sorry we're out of here, my man. Dave D, OSB is yours to fail. You start with 100 points. Yes, you do. Great to see you. I can't see you, mate, but I hope you're doing well. And let's stick up the picture of... Bam, no, not you. No, not these guys. No, not them either. What about the lovely Madison Rosario? What a vision. What a vision. If you're looking at the moment there, Maddie, yes, I will marry you tomorrow. And that's not just because she looks 100%. That's because I love what happened in her heart and watched how she's fought back from tragedy from when she was 10 years old to where she is now to win the gold for Australia. She's not a quitter. And I love your billy cart too. Uh, what is it going to the bottle? Curiosity show. And happy birthday, George Jetson. That's us, team. Go Australia. And to all of those that's down. Um, let's get out of here. Enjoy your coffee and peace to your mother. That's Kaz in the trenches.